Hello, everybody. This is a very odd today. It's going to be a weird sort of cast. It's going to be short. It's going to be super, super duper short. But I'm going to uh, do this anyway, and it's going to be a little distracting. I'm Doc Normal. This is Coffee with Curmudgeons on Friday. It's this weird, weird Friday holiday. The holiday was right in the middle, and it was crazy. And so, uh, without further ado, uh, Jason Allen. Uh, okay, uh, Jason, Jason, Jason. Uh, how about Jay Z? Oh, ooh, uh, 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 Jason, Jay Z. <coughs> no, <laughs> uh, Jay Z's off today, and Jason was at a show last night, and um, so uh, you know he's a little a wall. He was at a rock and roll show. I was supposed to go or something, but I uh, fell asleep. So it's kind of me solo in the studio today. This is weird. This is like one of those uh, periscopes you see with people who, uh, uh, you know, they pick up their phone and it's like, hey, everybody, how's everybody doing? Wow, you know, uh, I'm doing okay, you know. But it's not like that. Uh, so what I thought, rather than canceling the show, uh, I thought I'd actually do, uh, I'm not going to do two hours today, obviously, but um, I'm not going to talk about the news or whatever. Um, but uh, what I thought I'd do is I thought I'd do like a quick uh, behind the scenes, like how how does this all work? What are we doing back here? You know, um, <clears throat> and show it to you. So uh, I'm going to try that. If you have questions online, I am online. I'm on Twitter. Uh, we've got the, uh, I'll throw this up here, and I'll talk about how this stuff works. 503-395-5040. Uh, I will open that up right now. So if you if you were able to call, uh, let me show you how it works here. Um, eh, maybe I won't jump ahead. No, I will. Uh, if you call... You can get on the on the uh, line here and uh, oh, Android. Come on. So this is kind of how it's going to go. We're gonna, just going to show some behind the scenes stuff. Um, so if you do this, and I'll show you how this uh, works. I'm going to show you how all this works for your live streaming. So if I do that, we should, if everything works correctly, you should be able to. Yeah, right there. See? And then you just hit this. Hello, hello, hello. Goodbye. So there it Goodbye. is. You can kind of hear it there. So uh, that number is live right now. But I'm going to take it to the other, the other one here. Okay, so this is going to be some compelling, some compelling stuff right now. So, uh, how does this whole thing work? Okay, so it's live streaming, and uh, this is all kind of professional live stream. And again, if you have a question, I've got my Twitter open. I'm going to be really distracted. This is the typical thing. This is the thing I don't like doing when I do a show. But if you have a question or something, I'm going to try to pick it up. And uh, like I said, going to do do a real short thing, show you how this works. I even brought... I didn't plan this, but I brought uh, I brought a little thing uh, here to show it how it works. Okay, so we are on live stream. We are live streaming on Periscope right now, which is on Twitter, and we are live streaming on Facebook. That's how this whole thing works. And the way we we do that is uh, Facebook, YouTube. And Twitter, Periscope, they uh, put in a professional API, um, uh, a way in, in which uh, you can professionally tie in and podcast. Before that, uh, all of these people uh, had like apps for your phone, and obviously they still do. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, and you can uh, turn on your phone and with the app and go live and it all works through the app but you can't do this right you can't do uh all these things camera um graphics you know it, it, it's just maybe someday you will it's possible uh but what what you want to do is you want if you want to do like multiple cameras and you want to do graphics like we have let me just put this up here like that is a live graphic 
that's actually coming off a Mac Mini that's right behind me here on this monitor. So if you say you're doing like a live event, a conference or something like that, you would have, maybe you have a speaker, maybe you have a, at least a couple cameras, you know, kind of a close camera, someone kind of following the person on the stage and a wider camera and then they're they're talking and they're uh, you know talking about news box here and then you you might want to take their actual slide all in lovely wonderful HD um, that's how you would do how you would do that so you need equipment you need software uh, you need all this these types of things to do now uh, broadcast right there you see right behind me there uh that's my uh like little company and we do that stuff we actually go out and do conferences we live stream we record we do all of that people on stage they're talking they're showing their slides and that's the same basic premise that we've got going here in the newsbox studio uh with the equipment now it takes it, you know, it takes an investment of time, money, hardware, software. Um, there are some solutions out there. In fact, and I'm going to be distracted because I'm, I'm doing stuff here on the uh, computer. And I, I want this to be informative. It's something I've wanted to do in a while. And since the show's kind of in a weird state today, um, I uh, wanted to... Uh, I went ahead and said, you know what, why don't we do this? Oh, now look what just happened. <laughs> uh, look at that. I hit a button here. That was interesting. We're going to talk about this in a minute, too. I actually hit a, a remote control that's under this desk. And it, it's something that happens sometimes during the show. It's because there's a, you know, there's a, there's a chair here with uh, these armrests. And the armrest, the person who installed it, which was me, didn't realize that the armrests could go up against this button and uh and make it uh uh you know zoom it in and zoom it out inadvertently um <coughs> excuse me um i was gonna see here ah now here's i'm gonna tell you about a vendor solution which i have not used okay i have not used this product but it looks pretty slick for uh, for doing live streams uh, and recording your events for uh, cheap, um, on the cheap, for hardware, software, and all of that. Uh, I, I want to use one of these, but again, um, oh, they've added Facebook Live and Periscope. Awesome. Okay. So here's this product, and this is something, like when you do this, when, when, when we go out, and do a live event we can do it you know on a certain budget you have people you have to set up cameras it's all hd uh someone's there like managing the live stream it's just like television you have a live technical director producer camera folks uh, lighting audio you need to make sure everything's working properly so that the experience online is really really good and uh, we've been doing this for a long long time i've been doing this for for years so uh, it takes a lot of IT know-how. It takes a lot of uh, video production creative know-how. It's a combination of all those things. Now, uh, there's a certain budget, and you go out and you ask people, like, come to me, hey, how much would this cost? We're doing a two-day conference. You know, we're doing this and this and this. I've got one coming up soon. And, uh, and you know, so you hire you hire people out to do that. Now, sometimes the, your, your show your your uh, event is uh, is on a tight tight budget and uh, you can't maybe you can't afford that to hire a production company to do the actual live streaming the caveat there is you want to do a good job so there there comes kind of a cut off of where you are willing to pay for it or uh, you know you're you're just scrub the whole idea you know, have someone with a camera come in and record it because there's a certain threshold uh, where uh, you'll you'll do more damage than you will um, help. Uh, 
you know, because if you're going to do a live stream and you go out and some, you know, someone on your team comes out with their, their iPhone, their Android or their pad and it's like, okay, you know, we're going to stream this. It's a horrible, horrible experience. It's not, not professional. Sure. You can get away with it. You can do it, but just because you can do it doesn't mean you should uh, do it. Uh, so I've run in that situation where people say, well, you know, that's kind of out of our our cost that that's not going to work and um this product which i'll show you right here and i'll talk about uh this all behind the scenes what i'm doing here while we're doing it <clears throat> this product right here is uh and again a uh, caveat i have not used this okay this is called the mevo live event camera <clears throat> And it is uh, it is offered by the people at Livestream, and Livestream is a uh, they are a live streaming service provider. So we could, for example, we could be doing this show on Livestream. Uh, there's also a uh, one called UStream. Livestream and UStream were the original live streamers, and then you see uh, YouTube. And Periscope got in the game. Now, what I noticed here, which is really cool, um, now at first with this camera, and I'll talk about the camera in a minute, you could only do live streams to live stream to their platform. <coughs> As you see there on the left, it says live stream. By the way, if you're on the audio, um, I'm sorry. Uh, you can jump on Periscope, look at NZZBXX Newsbox, and you can watch this or grab our Facebook page because it's going to be very visual. I'll try to describe it. But this MEVO, Mevo camera, it's at getmevo.com, uh, Mevo camera. Uh, so th at first they were only doing live stream. Obviously, live stream does this uh, product, so they're like, you use our platform. But now it says streams to Facebook Live and Periscope, just like what we're doing. So that's very cool. Um, I like that. Um, this is what the camera looks like. So it's small. You see it's in someone's hand there. <laughs> Uh, you see the lens. It's a single fixed lens. And what that is, this camera, this box, is what they call a 4K camera. Um, it has a 4K sensor. And that's, uh, you know, kind of what is 4K? It's ultra HD. It's kind of double the resolution of HD a little more. I don't want to... <clears throat> one of these days, if we do more tech talk type things... Uh, I could talk about things like formats and 4K. If you have questions, I can answer them. But um, there's a, you know, like anything in video, there's a lot of FUD, uh, fear, uncertainty, and doubt in 4K. Uh, we are streaming in 1080p, by the way. Well, we're actually we're we are producing in 1080p. Uh, we are streaming at a lower rate because most the secret is most. Um, most services don't do 4K. Yeah, sure, you can do it, but it, it's it's all about bandwidth and compression and all of that. Uh, the source, uh, the higher level the source, the better, but at the end you have to get it to your, deliver it to your customer. And um, for those people who have cable, TV, HD, you watch the sports, the HD channels. A lot of those are at best uh, 1080i, which is 1080 interlaced, uh, just because they have to use all that bandwidth on that cable coming in and bringing all those channels. Um, a lot of people don't know that. Everyone's a 4K this, 4K that. Um, yes, Amazon can stream at 4K. I think Netflix is doing some stuff. But again, you're not getting... Um, your your connection to the internet or your cable connection isn't uh, bigger. There are people who have things like FiOS, fiber going into their home. That's very high-end. Um, uh, but it's not so much what's coming into your home as how it gets all shared out in your neighborhood um, and all of that. So so there's a, there's a certain, you know, you, you only have a four-lane highway <laughs> if you put flood it with cars you get a traffic jam no matter how many lanes you have uh two lanes or four lanes if you put enough cars in there you, you'll stop traffic and that's kind of the same way technology works uh, a little bit you know you can only put so many packets on the entire network um <clears throat> which is why uh yes we stream in hd but 
um, it's a highly compressed and maybe a smaller formatted HD. So the and how does that relate to the Mevo camera? Well, like I said before, it has a 4K sensor, so that's a better than HD, higher resolution um, than HD. It just has a fixed lens. It's kind of a fisheye lens. And what they're doing with this camera, basically, and here's a photo here, they're, they're setting it up and you're getting one single shot. So just like this, this this would be my single shot. And usually you'd kind of have a wider shot of the stage. So if we look if we look here <clears throat> at their website, um, this is a great product uh, thing for the MEVO, the Mevo camera. But it, but it's a it's a technology that uh, is very useful to people who are first time streamers. Again, I don't have experience with this product, so caveat emptor. I think so. Uh, so on the left, you see a guy on an iPhone, and he's looking at a picture, and there's a whole band there. Okay? There's the entire band. And that would be kind of the shot that you would have with this, uh, this single-lens camera. And then what they do, because it's this higher-resolution 4K, you can zoom in and get, like, a respectable HD. Uh, you can split. You could split the that one single shot up into uh, into multiple uh, close-ups virtually and you still have the high resolution of HD because this is better than HD and it's usually like at 720p which is the entry-level lowest version so what they've got is they've got an app that you run on your iPad or your phone um, it says iOS so I don't know if they have Android or not so it might be iOS only. And you kind of define, as you see here, uh, if you're watching the stream, you uh, kind of define uh, different shots. Like, oh, let's take a close-up of the singer's face or a close-up of this guitar player or whatever. And then you can virtually switch this camera into different shots. <clears throat> I'm excited that this thing does uh, Facebook Live and Periscope, by the way. So stream live or share later, so you can record on this, of course, record on the camera. You use the app to direct your shots. Stream live to your audience uh, from virtually anywhere via Wi-Fi or LTE. Uh, record HD videos directly to your SD card, which is in the camera, or stream to live stream Facebook, Periscope, or Twitter. Get multi Destination streaming and cloud video storage with the live stream Mevo plan. So see, they've got their own plan. They want to sell their service, but again, you could use... That's cool that they're doing Facebook and Periscope. Not YouTube, though. Uh, no rig required. Simple, small, and discreet. Uh, it's like a TV studio in your pocket. So uh, so we'll just do a quick tech specs, and then I'll go back to what we're doing. They've got an attachment, which is, has a giant battery amount, the Mevo Boost. So there it is, uh, control button, Wi-Fi strength. Uh, this goes over Wi-Fi. Uh, if you buy this uh, boost unit, this bigger unit, which has a big battery in it, it has an Ethernet port. And uh, we always like to say uh, streaming over Ethernet port is a lot more reliable than going over Wi-Fi because you might be fighting with other Wi-Fi people. That's just a pro tip. Here's the boost. Mevo power data connector, waterproof. Uh, five LED battery, so it's got a big battery in it, and then yes, it's got uh, over here in the right, it has a uh, a 10 100 megabit Ethernet plug, um, and then a USB A plug for plugging in, uh, for example, cellular data units. So that's cool. So that is, um, oh, <laughs> I accidentally switched there. Uh, so that is uh, kind of a cool solution for people. Uh, I was going to find out how much it costs too. For people who want to do this kind of thing with multiple cameras and all that, and uh, on a on a budget. And um, let's see, I was just going to look here for y'all. How much this costs? Ah, oh, here it is, right here. Oh, 
Let's go over here. Like I said, I'm doing this alone today. Order your Mevo today. Uh, Mevo Black, three ninety nine. Mevo White, three ninety nine. And the Pro Bundle, which comes with that boost with the Ethernet port and all that, is five ninety nine ninety seven. I think you can plug this thing into. Um, <clears throat> I think that you can plug this into power via USB. So that's offered by Livestream. I'm assuming that there are other competing products. They were the first out to do this, which is exciting. Um, you know, uh, just super exciting. And again, so three, 400 bucks, and there you go. You can start getting set up to do your own professional type live streaming in HD as opposed to just using this shaky, um, ugly uh, camera phone for your Periscope and, and your live stream. So that's pretty good. Uh, the options we have on a low co lower budget is we have a 4K video camera. It's a full-on uh, video camera that uh, has a uh, an adapter, USB adapter on it that then you can wirelessly or on via Ethernet uh, stream right off the camera. And it's a 4K camera too. Now it doesn't have the software that does the Mevo to break it up. We 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 would run it just like a single camera. But we we got that set up to do a wireless remote camera and also <clears throat> and also to be able to uh for like say a client says hey this is I don't have much going on here, but I want to stream this and record it. You know, what does it cost to bring in a camera and set it up and do that? We have a solution for that. Uh, rather than all of the other equipment and more complicated things. And of course, you wouldn't capture, on these solutions, you wouldn't capture like uh, like the uh, live live streaming slides, right? From a computer. Um <clears throat> And that, that, that one we have is also 4K, so we just if we needed to record something in 4K. I'm not going to talk about 4K today. Uh, I would like to talk more about video tech and that sort of thing, and I'd like to talk more about 4K. I didn't prepare this, so this is off the top of my head. <clears throat> if I do stuff like that, I would, um, I would talk more about, uh, you know, have a little script and talk a little bit more... Uh, uh, scripted about how this stuff works. I actually even have some stuff. I'm going to take a drink of coffee because my throat is really dry. And <clears throat> so let's go on. How, how do we do this? Okay. <clears throat> uh, first, audio. All good live streams require good audio. And, um, and I've seen these things, these events where the audio is really, really bad. Uh, your video is only as good as your audio, by the way. As a matter of fact, interestingly enough, uh, psychologically, in my own personal studies, um, you, uh, you can watch a video that's not quite the highest quality if it has really pristine good audio versus if you watch a really good video and the audio is horrible that's gonna it's gonna mess with your head and i see that people like go out and shoot concerts and that sort of thing and they bring their hd cameras excuse me they bring their dslrs which can shoot this wonderful beautiful hd video and they just use the mic on the camera for the band playing and it's horrible it's just the worst uh it's it's one of my pet peeves and you're like uh what wh why bother um professional people who shoot bands they'll 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 video with their dslrs with their camera they'll have someone come in with an audio device make a pristine recording uh, what we call a board recording off the mixer board of the uh of the show and then they'll come together to edit in software like Adobe Premiere or <clears throat> what I use, Final Cut Pro 10 FCPX. And you can bring in all your camera footage and your audio. And now uh, there's software uh, built, it's built into Final Cut. Uh, I assume it's built into Adobe, the new Adobe Premiere as well. But it will sync up 
all your camera shots and the audio so then you can just use the really good audio that you recorded and the really nice camera shots and then you can create a nice edit now that's all after the fact that's not live streamed <clears throat> For live streaming, you would need to bring in those camera angles and the really good uh, uh, audio board feed. And we'll talk about that in a second. Um, and, of course, that's all uh, after the fact. That, Like I said, that wouldn't be a live stream. That would be someone who would shoot and then edit the whole thing together and then post it later. So audio. I'm going to try this here. <clears throat> I grabbed a camera. So first, <clears throat> this is very typical of audio. So say you're doing an event. You've got a speaker, a talking head. This poor thing's been rehabilitated. It's been abused. This is a lavalier mic. Why don't we go ahead and try to do the zoom in now? Whoops, uh, wrong way. We'll do a little more of this. <clears throat> this is a lavalier mic so here's the yeah, like I said I didn't quite plan it this way but that's the mic the actual mic element and it's on a wire and typically goes to a box which then plugs in <clears throat> there's a plug here it's called an XLR which is the standard microphone cable and it plugs in there and uh and yes, you get audio. And so typically what you would do, like I say, this is a very weird coffee with curmudgeons, but it's not, not quite coffee with curmudgeons. It's more video audio tech with Doc Normal. Um, so this would kind of pan up here and get plugged in and go. Now, uh, this, this is one that gets plugged into, the, with the plug, gets plugged into the XLR. With the microphone cable, um, <clears throat> there are wireless versions. We have wireless versions where this is actually a wireless transmitter pack with an antenna, and then it goes to a receiver. That's pretty typical that you would see. The, this is a little... You know, this you have to have someone setting down because they can't go walk around the stage because they're they're plugged in. Uh, problems with the lavalier mic is that it gets uh, typically uh, put on your clothes here. I'm wearing all black, so you can't see that. And uh, uh, what happens is uh, your clothes, your um, your jackets, your lapels, whatever, can rub against it, and that can be a problem. Uh, it can create a lot of problem. Uh, usually when we use one of these, the biggest problem is uh, you have someone with long hair, uh, a woman, for example, or, or it can be a guy, and they have long flowing hair, and the hair gets on the mic, and that will always cause problems. Also, jewelry. People are wearing a bunch of chains and jewelry and stuff like that. Uh, it'll all crunch, crunch, and you'll just get... You'll get that basically it's very annoying it's annoying for your live stream and also it's going over a pa for people and it's also annoying for them too uh we had that happen uh, recently on an event and uh there was an av team and of course they got to run out there and fix it <laughs> like we got to fix this because you can't do this the whole time <clears throat> Excuse me. I'm, I think I'm coming down with the summer cold, too. That's fun. Uh, so the solution to that, <laughs> and I don't have one here, is a headset. And you see these headsets that go over, and they stick out, and there's a, a little... Um, there's a little kind of boom mic attachment that's here. Uh, back in the old days, the Britney Spears days, it literally looked like this. It looked like having one of these labs sitting out here, like you're at a, directing traffic at an airport, you know. Uh, you know, if you look up like the old uh, Madonna and Britney Spears, when they dance and sing, and you'd see them with one of these, these mics, Janet Jackson with one of these mics on. Uh, they've gotten better. They're a little bit like more uh, clear, so they blend in with the skin tone. But they are very obvious, nonetheless. You still see them. Um, <clears throat> they avoid the reason people use that is because it avoids uh, getting problems with your your outfit. Certainly, if you're dancing and singing. 
as a public speaker, that helps. It takes a little more work wiring it up before someone goes on. Um, but it will avoid that. But here's the problem. And here's the problem I have with uh, a headset mic. They don't look good. <clears throat> and you see pictures, you see professional speakers come out, and they're all wired up with the headset. And you go, oh, this is a professional speaker. Look at that. They've got a headset. That's a look. But uh, oftentimes they put – there's a – there's a pop filter here, the foam that goes around the mic element uh, that keeps keeps you from pop, pop, popping. Uh, there's a pop filter on <clears throat> on this. Uh, sorry about my voice today. There's a pop filter on this lav mic element too. Well, they're putting pop filters on those those speaker headset mics, and they're they're awful. So it looks, it's that thing where you watch a video and someone looks like they've got like a big kind of blemish on their skin. <coughs> you know, like they've got like a big wart or something right there just floating on their skin. I find it horrible. I think it looks awful um, for video. And it's usually pink flesh tone for a white person. Not everyone's white, folks, who's going to get up on a stage. Uh, you watch for it. You will see it in professionally produced uh, presentations on stage. And, yeah, if you're, if you're live there on stage, maybe you're further away from the speaker. But, you know, big productions, they have cameras, and they put the close-up on screens so you can see it, like in a, a, a ballroom hotel ballroom and it just looks awful <laughs> i really don't like it and i prefer not to use those mics for that reason a little known fact that people don't know is that technology originally there was uh, the origination of some of that was on broadway for broadway musicals where they had to mic people up singers so they could hear in these big uh you know these big theaters uh, in new york where they do uh, broadway shows and they use the night mic technology that goes actually in the hairline gets hidden in the costume where you don't see the mic or you the mic element kind of comes down from the hairline so if you're on a stage you wouldn't you wouldn't see the microphone and uh but that takes a lot of preparation so you're not going to do that for an event here's my recommendation and i'm just going to put it out there <clears throat> Use a lav mic. Take your time backstage, your AV team, or if you are doing the AV, to mic the person up properly. Make sure that any obstructions like hairline, uh, jewelry, clothes are all out of the way. Make sure your speaker is aware of the mic and go that way. Okay? Use a lav mic when possible. It will look better. Yeah, sure, it's going to hang off the clothes. I mean... <clears throat> There's, you know, there's not a lot you can do about it, but you won't have this, uh, this mic coming down and f for please, please, uh, the, the, the pop filter on that, that, that headset mic, try not to use that. Um, you, it's, it, it's going to look horrible. It's going to look like someone has something right on their face and it looks horrible in video. It looks horrible in close ups. Also, <clears throat> another thing. I find that those, um, another thing to be aware of is those headset mics that you use for speakers, they are a lot crisper than a lav mic, uh, just the way the acoustics are, because it's, it's running through a tube and then going back into a microphone element and pack, uh, so it's kind of going through this little tube, tube thing to pick up the, the audio. Um, <clears throat> They're very, uh, they're very thin. They're not like low and have a lot of frequency response. And I think uh, if you're on the AV and you're in the board, uh, running the mixing board, you, you need to take that into account. So I find them very uh, scratchy. <clears throat> the speaker sounds very scratchy when they're talking uh, on stage. <clears throat> I'm sorry. I'm having a, I'm having a. Uh, I usually don't talk this much on the show, so I'm dealing with having, you know, my morning throat and allergies or whatever it is. Coffee. But I'm kind of enjoying this. I'm hoping this might be helpful. So, Doc's rule about audio, try to use the lav, spend time, 
be aware of the issues with clothing and how to place the mic. Have someone, a professional, place the mic properly um, when you, if you can. Okay? All right. Uh, what does that setup look like? Well, okay, you have... Uh, <clears throat> You have your wireless mics, or you have uh, mics like this. This is a wired mic. You can see right here. Um, this is the XLR, if you can see it. Um, this is uh, this is where the XLR plugs in, right there. And this is a, this is a big uh, condenser mic, which is why it's big. So the bigger uh, the bigger the mic. Well, I, I shouldn't say that. You could have a dynamic mic that is a big mic. This is a, this is a good mic. It, it's used for broadcast. You can record music with it. It's got a flat response. There are others. You see people with podcasters. They have these big uh, dynamic mics. They're all for kind of close miking and, and getting a good, good sound. Uh, a condenser mic means that it has an active electronic element. A dynamic mic doesn't. I don't have... I don't have a dynamic mic. I didn't plan this, so I don't have a dynamic mic handy. Um, if you see a, a rock and roll singer running around, throwing the mic around, you know, screaming in the mic, that's usually a dynamic mic. <laughs> you know, uh, it doesn't require any power for the mic. Doesn't require batteries. Doesn't require uh, power being applied to the mic. It plugs in. It's a passive element. There's a little uh, membrane that e the sound waves of your voice or your instrument or whatever it is vibrate the membrane against a magnet, which creates a little voltage, which is then uh, transformed uh, into a, a, a strong enough voltage to be sent back <clears throat> to the mixing board or the amplifier and turned into sound. Uh, a condenser mic is one that has an electronic circuit in it. It still has a membrane and all that, but the membrane has to be polarized. There you go. Uh, and so you apply a voltage <clears throat> to that, and the same thing happens. It sends voltage out, which represents sound waves. Um, so that's what one of these are. This is a Audio Technica 2020. I highly recommend this mic. Um, so what you have to do, it, it doesn't uh, take a battery. Some of these mics, you can put batteries in and use it. This Audio Technica does not take a battery. Um, <clears throat> you apply voltage, a power, through the actual mic cable. So there's a mic cable here that's plugged into the microphone and you can put a little DC voltage uh, it's 48 volts <clears throat> uh, through one of the pins of the microphone that is called phantom power <clears throat> that's what phantom power means so if you get a little mixing board now I do have a mixing board we can show here let's do that this is going to be my worst effort at podcasting all my best. Oh, good. So there's a little grab bag of things here. Um, there's the button right there. So let me show you. This is a little tiny board. And if you're doing a small little... Sorry, I can't zoom in properly. If you're doing like... Um, small speaking events or you've got a band you know guitar singer kind of thing no drums you could get a little mixing board like this you can get these at your local music store like places like portland music or whatever uh guitar center you can order them on amazon b h but that's what that is right there a little mixer board and you see it has two of these xlr two channels xlr these black these big black plugs here, and that's for two microphones, XLR style. And then it's got inputs that you can plug in, like guitars or keyboards or other items. Um, it, these come in multiple configurations. Uh, you, you have to figure out how many mics you need. So this one would be, oh, we can plug in two people. This would be something great for speakers. We've used it portable before where you got a couple mics in a room um 
But uh, the bigger the board, the more mics it can accommodate and the more features. Now, the Phantom Power, there's a little button right here that I'm pointing to, right there, that says Phantom. And if you, if you turn it on, it's not turned on, a little light will come on that will basically say Phantom. <clears throat> That's what I'm talking about. That's Phantom Power. So if I plug in my um, live, see I'm doing this all by myself, by the way, all this tech, so that's why we're kind of talking about it. Uh, if you plug in like the uh, this uh, condenser mic, which requires power, we plug it into the XLR, it's not going to work <coughs> until I turn, press this button and apply phantom 48 volt power. And there's a little red LED that would come on when that power is is turned on. We'll leave that there for a minute. Um, <clears throat> and that's that's all you need to do a condenser. Now, if you use a dynamic mic, and uh, some of the most popular, again, I've got them, but I don't don't have any right here, right handy. But sure, microphone. Uh, this is an Audio Technica, as I mentioned, but the company Sure and others uh, makes a very popular SM58 for vocals and an SM57 for like instruments. You can also use it for vocals. Those are some of the most popular uh, dynamic mics that have ever been made. I think they were designed back in the 60s, I want to say. Uh, they were super, super durable. They're really... Uh, strong metal uh there's a, a st an old rock and roll story that you could pound a nail with one of these uh one of these microphones and it'll still work that's how durable they are this, this is the kind of microphone that a uh, roger daltrey would throw across the stage while he's playing with the who uh, those are very good dynamic mics there are others that are dynamic again you don't have to worry about the power for those mics <clears throat> uh so uh uh, so you could get those and just be done with it. Now, a lot of the time, those mics aren't quite as sensitive as a condenser mic. Condenser mics are a little more sensitive. Now, I, I happen to be close mic'd here, but I don't have to be. I could still look. Oh, hey, I'm over here now. I'm about a foot away from my mic, and you can still hear me quite nicely. There's, there's certain reasons why, but this condenser mic can handle uh, what's called a proximity effect which means if I'm further away from the mic, the mic still sounds good versus if I'm up close and close miking. okay? Dynamic mics are less so like that. Uh, you really have to kind of get into the mic to get a good sound. So if you're doing a podcast, you're definitely up in the mic, in the condenser mic. When I did uh, the first <coughs> podcasts <coughs> I did, uh, I used a uh, Shure SM57s, and everyone was on a boom mic, and everyone was like, that mic was right in their faces. We kind of do that here, which we shouldn't be. This mic was more for a tabletop mic, so you can, you know, like you see in uh, talk shows where you can interview someone and there's a mic <clears throat> off off the side, and it picks up everyone really, really well. Um, so just be aware that you're close miking with a dynamic where you can get away with a little bit further out with that proximity effect. <clears throat> um, and a lot of podcasts, you see that anyway. It's like the podcast thing where you see people close mic'd. <clears throat> uh, when I did kind of a talk show chat show, it was definitely, I didn't want I wanted you to see the face on the video. Uh, didn't want you to see here. Here it's a little different because we're kind of doing the podcasty kind of thing. <clears throat> but if you're doing an interview tabletop, really the best thing to do is use that lav again because the lav will be close mic'd. It will isolate your your speaker, your person, and um, you know you won't have to worry about the proximity effect the issue you'll have using a tabletop mic is it picks up other things too so if you're in a loud environment say you're in a conference <clears throat> a loud conference floor and you're doing interviews this this mic could maybe not be so good or maybe not it just depends use your ears all right so uh that's the miking wow i'm really really uh 
doing a lot of stuff here. Whatever. I've been wanting to do this. Uh, take the time. Uh, make it make it valuable. And I apologize because I'm doing this myself. I'm kind of uh, taking um, taking the time here. I'm just gonna look if you have a question. Um, oh, that didn't go out. If you have a question, uh, do ask it directly to me either on Twitter or whatever. I will answer questions if there's anybody out there that has questions. If you uh, look look what I did again. I really have to fix that. <laughs> That is poor design on my part. All right. A uh, little bit more about audio. And I'm going to now, I'm going to go grab this remote camera here. I'm going to show you the audio setup that we have here in the studio, which would be a typical audio setup. <clears throat> Let me try to, again, did not necessarily plan any of this. I just grabbed an available camera in the studio. I don't know if I'm going to be able to, okay, all right, let's switch, switch cameras here, try to show you what we got going here. All right, <clears throat> there is a mixing board here. That's what it looks like. Um, this one takes one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight mics. <clears throat> it has these sliders, which are called faders, very handy. That other board I showed you just had knobs. Uh, faders are nice. The top blue section, maybe I'll just show it on this one, because this is kind of the same, same manufacturer, smaller board. This top blue section here is called EQ. <clears throat> it's three-band EQ. So it's a uh, high. This is the high band, so this is the treble and the mid-range kind of where you're if you have a speaker mid-range is where a lot of their voice would be and the bass <clears throat> um, there's often for the microphones a preamp which boosts the mic signal going into the board that's what these black are now different each each mixer board is different but this is basically kind of the layout of a basic analog mixer board here's the xlr three three um three point plug here is a line in which is a quarter inch you can also sometimes they'll put uh i think this one over here has it but i can't show it to you uh rca like for your uh cd player or your your uh you know your mp3 player so you can play that so there's uh this is very basic they all boards typically although i've seen some that don't have an eq section and then there's a auxiliary or uh, FX section. Um, this is where you could send a separate mix. <clears throat> a lot of that time that's used to send it out to like reverb or effects or something like that. Or sending it to a monitor. You might have a separate monitor on stage <clears throat> or backstage. And then you always have like a pan control right here, left, right. So again, for speaking and talks, uh, your pan control is less important. Your uh, your auxiliary effects may or may not be. And here, this is the actual volume knobs, which are sliders. <clears throat> You'll typically have um, a uh, these are LEDs. They used to be analog meters. Uh, they'll show you kind of the signal. And then you've got your main outs, your main volume, and maybe your auxiliary volume. There's usually a headphone amp. There is an auxiliary return. Well, this is very basic, but this this is um, this is uh, the volume of uh, plugging in an auxiliary mix like for example if you went to some effects some echo effects or something like this <clears throat> this would control how much echo you put in to your reverb you put into your um, your mix you know to make it uh, again when you're doing speakers and that sort of thing probably not going to use any of that and then there's usually this this is a cd tape interface this is or ipod now where you could put like some music in and there's usually controls there. Let's take a look here and just take a quick look. 
Uh, you see, there's just a lot more of what I decided. Uh, there's more auxiliary, so you could do more monitor mixes if you're doing a band, for example. They have multiple monitors. You know, the drummer gets a different mix or m different effects. Uh, so that's pretty much the difference on this board. Uh, it has a little more EQ on it. The mid-range has something called a sweepable EQ where you can actually isolate. It's called a parametric EQ, and you can actually isolate the frequency you want to boost or cut. Uh, in the mid-range, and that's uh, that's handy. You can say you've got a speaker that doesn't sound quite good. You can isolate uh, the sound of their voice uh, in the uh, equalization, in the tone of their voice, and you can boost it or you can cut it if there's something annoying in their voice. Uh, this one has also, there's some numbers there, LED, it says 44. We have, uh, this has effects on it. Some, some higher-end boards, a little more expensive, uh, have uh, uh, some effects built in so you can do reverb or you can thicken it, uh, thicken the sound. Uh, here you see the LEDs as I talk. I'm talking right now. And you see the LEDs there <clears throat> going up and down. That's kind of the level. Level's kind of low, but uh, it's getting fed somewhere else. And then you have a sub mix and a main mix. And there's also mutes here too. So you see those. Um, you can mute the channel. Uh, now, Yamaha boards have a turn the channel on or off. It's essentially the same thing. One, one company's mute is another company's on off. Uh, but that's what that is right there. So you can <clears throat> mute a channel or, or unmute a channel. And that's usually what happens when you, s when, um, say you're doing an event then someone comes out and they start talking and they do this you don't you don't hear anything it's like what's what's wrong with the mic turn the mic on or unmute their channel that's typically what what to look for if you're not getting any sound uh, and every board just you, I mean you, you you know you've probably seen photographs of uh, studios where people record albums uh, and they've got giant mixer board, or you go to a concert, and someone's got this giant mixer board out there, they're mixing the concert. Uh, a lot of boards now are digital. They're run by a computer, so they bring in the audio, and then they digitize it, and they do it all virtually. That's a lot more complicated. Uh, you need to learn that, your system. Uh, I, I myself, if I deal with those, I come in, I, I don't know those cold, right? Because you need to know the computer, the menuing system, and all of that. So someone actually has to know that product. <clears throat> For analog boards, the layout is pretty simple, and they all kind of... Um, they all kind of uh, work to this analog metaphor. So, you know, the the buttons on certain boards can be in different places that you have to go hunt for and go, oh, where was the aux post fader? Uh, Soundcraft boards are always, I think it's Soundcraft. One of the English boards is always throws me for a loop for that. But they all work the same, basically. The fader, the EQ, the uh, aux sends and all of that. More on audio, yes, and then we're going to get into video and live streaming. And all of this stuff you can use on your event. If you're an event person, organizer, starting an event, these are all things to know about. Even if you're not going to do this, this is what your audio AV people are working with. Um, so I, I will briefly talk about this. One thing we do here because this is kind of relevant. Oh, sorry. This is so... <laughs> okay. Let's switch over to the camera again. Okay, uh, there's a effects rack, and again, this is where you'd have, like, if you were doing a band, you'd have audio or, or you know, you'd have reverb or echo. Um, <clears throat> the little blue guys are called preamps. They are tubes. They're actually tube preamps. And two preamps make a nice warm sound. That's uh, partially why things sound the way they are. You don't need them. You can just go into the board for events, but it's it's something. You see down here, there's my channel. You can see my my 
my tube is going. Uh, now the tube preamp also will provide power to the mic instead of the board. So that's what's going on here. And then the output, the preamp output goes into the um, the mixer and there's not a whole lot of EQ or anything. All of that is created by the tube preamp. You do not need that. Um, <clears throat> the little silver black thing in the middle is a headphone amplifier. So we've got headphone channels <clears throat> out here so I can hear what's going on. And I have headphones right now. And I'm listening, monitoring, monitoring what we're doing. How it sounds to make sure everything sounds okay. And I hear everything. Um, for a live event, you don't necessarily need headphones. These mixing boards have a headphone output on there. If you're doing, here's the thing, if you're doing a live video recording or a live stream, have someone plugged into the headphones listening to the main audio that's going out to your video. Please do that. I have seen so many video producers that don't monitor the audio and then they come back and go, oh, there was no audio, or the audio was scratchy, or we were getting noise, or something was wrong. The way to prevent that if you're doing live video <clears throat> is plug in, put on some good headphones. I don't have my good headphones here. I've got a pair of really big, isolated, uh, headphones are called cans that, that go over your ears, and when they're over your ears, you can't hear a lot of outside noise. You hear what's going on in the headphones. Get a pair of those, put them on, make your video person wear them, or if you have another person who's uh, monitoring the audio, have them monitor. Monitor it all the time because something can go wrong in the audio. Someone's mic doesn't get turned up or whatever, and you're live streaming, and guess what? The first... 30 minutes of your show, no one's, you, it's a silent film. That's horrible. Don't do that. Don't do it at all. Now, you can, you know, the good thing is if you have your equipment and you have those meters, you can watch the meters and go, well, we're getting audio, yes. But the only way you're ever going to know is if you've got good headphones on and you're listening to the program. That is the only way to do it. And that's why I'm doing this. Um, <clears throat> now, what are my headphones in here? Well, I, you know, a lot of podcasters and stuff, you're going to see them <clears throat> do the whole radio thing, the big mic and the big headphones. <clears throat> That's fantastic. Uh, I don't know why everyone has to wear headphones unless they're taking phone calls on the air, which often they're not. But uh, just be aware that if you're doing a podcast, maybe you don't have to buy headphones for every single person on your, your crew. Maybe the one person who's doing the tech stuff needs headphones and everyone else doesn't. And you can just tell them not to. Or you can get headphones for everyone and they can hear how they sound as well. It's it's up to you. That's just, that's just a money-saving cost idea. Now, for a video show, uh, I like to not see the headphones so much. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to take another sip of coffee. I watched Kyle MacLachlan's uh, Facebook stream yesterday morning. It was really good. He sat in a studio just like this and took questions about Twin Peaks. I could take question, questions about Twin Peaks, too. Not as Kyle MacLachlan, but, you know. I don't know. Who is that giant? Um, so, headphones. I like in-ear headphones that are really good. They're harder to find for video. So this is kind of an, what we call an IFB. I can't remember what IFB stands for, sorry. And they're in-air headphones that hide away. They're, they're, uh, they're, they're, they're like the sport kind of headphones for listening to your iPod while you're working out or whatever. They also happen to fit in here and also they're, they're very good. They're made by Sony. They don't make them anymore. Jason got a pair. Uh, it's a little more obtrusive uh they're also kind of colored a little bit like silver and they show up but it's a better alternative to the big cans these are are great um and i can hear really well with these so that's a little bit specialized mostly if you're doing a live event you're producing the event you're wearing the big headphones if you're doing a podcast you don't care you're wearing the big headphones that's fine that's just a little thing that that i do a little more professional if you want to do something a little more professional on um 
on video, that's what you want to do. If you watch television news, they have this IFB, this in-ear. That's usually a monitor that uh, where you're calling people, and um, and the director is uh, saying stuff like, uh, uh, "Oh, um, I'm getting, I'm getting, I'm getting pinged." <laughs> I think. Hang on a second. This is very live and interactive. Very live and interactive. Mm -hmm. Oops. Uh, oop. Okay. Uh, anyway. Um, that, it's uh, Jason. <laughs> hey, Jason. Uh, he can call in. You can totally call in if you want. Uh, we're talking tech, Jason, if you are monitoring. Actually, I'll say that. Um, I'm talking tech. You can call in if you like. <laughs> anyway, there's Jason. <clears throat> uh, long night. Like I said, he was at a show last night, so I kind of figured that out. Okay, uh, where was I? We're still on audio. Wow, we're an hour in, we're on audio. Good job. Good job, Doc Normal. Talk, talk, talk. Um... The other piece to audio for your show, if you're doing a live show, um, is um, the PA, the amplifier. I'm not going to deal with that, but that's the speakers and the, the power amps, and that's where your mixing mixer board gets plugged in and ultimately goes out to PA. That's usually provided by the house. Again, if you get into these things for your live event, uh, hire somebody, hire uh, AV, you know, you can do it yourself, but you can, uh, you got to roll your own. If you have any questions, just get a, get a, get a hold of us on the social here, down here. You can leave a voicemail. There are emails down here for Newsbox. I'm also at brightcast, B-R-Y-T-C-A-S-T at gmail.com um, if you have your streaming questions. Let's go on to video. And streaming. Um, where do I start? Oh, guess who that is? Hello. Yes, hello. I'm a first-time caller, long-time listener. Do you have a I'm, question? Uh, Turn I, down I, your I've radio. Got a, a tech question. I've got a tech question about the old Commodore 64. Yes. Um. Now, how how do we know that he was a commodore? <laughs> I mean, is there any is there any way of fact checking to make sure that he is a a, a, a you know a, a a legal commodore? Because I've heard rumors, and I, I don't know if this is true, but word on the street says that uh, that he may have been only a midshipman. Uh, do you have the Lionel Richie edition of the Commodore 64, sir? Yeah, I got the special funk brick house edition. It was uh, recorded it live at the Philadelphia Spectrum back in August 26, 1972. Then it is the uh, then it is the, uh, the indeed the genuine Commodore edition. <laughs> Excellent. I I just wanted to make sure that this just wasn't fake news. Because when they, when I heard about the whole uh, scandal involving Earth, Wind, and Fire, and a very very young Menudo, it just kind of blew my mind. I I yeah I I'm I'm sorry. This is uh, we we don't do f uh, the Funk Show is on Wednesdays. Okay, I guess I I guess I will uh, just. Stay up all night and, and days on end just to make it on Wednesday then. That's right. So uh, we're <laughs> I'm <laughs> I'm doing this. I I normally wouldn't do this, but I decided to. Yeah. I decided to go live because I had to turn off all the automated things, and I was uh, doing a behind the scenes tech, which is something I wanted to do Ooh. anyway. Uh, talk about yeah. live streaming and video. So I'm on the phone with Jason Allen. How was your evening? Well, it, it ran a little late. Uh, yeah, I can tell. And uh, the alarm 
uh, once again, the alarm was set. <laughs> and then I just, uh, eyes, uh, eyes are open. We know where it's like 10, uh, what, 10, 15. I'm like, poop. Yep. I did the same thing, uh, but I did make it down. So, but yeah. I figured, I figured I didn't Holy hear from yeah. you. And I was kind of like, I was thinking, okay, I just, you know, that's fine. We script the show. We don't have his Jay Z here today either. He he. Um, oh yeah, he's not here. So, but then I was like, no, I'm gonna go live because I want to talk about tech stuff. Because I was watching some stuff last right. night online, yeah. and I was gonna do behind the scenes. But uh, how was the show? Was the show worth it? I was supposed to go down there. I fell asleep, so I was. I've been up. Um, no. Was the show good? Uh, it, no, it was a great show. Great show. Yeah. And uh, I was surprised, pretty, uh, a pretty decent amount of people for a Thursday night. Yeah. Well, Thursday night's a good night. Yeah, I should have gone, but I was I was very wiped out. I've been working on a bunch of stuff, so I was kind of like, oh, That's all good, dude. tired, tired. Uh, yeah. So, right. Anyway. Oh. So. Yeah, I couldn't uh, believe it. I looked over ten fifteen. I'm like, oh, in my mind, the way weird thing, the way my mind works. I'm like, oh. 10, 15, uh, yeah, okay, cool. okay, no, uh, something, you know, something in the back of my brain tells me, dude, something's wrong, you know? Yeah, I know. <laughs> oh well, we had this weird... Crap! Here's my problem. Here is my problem. This is what I was going to bring up. This is a really weird week. Like, super mm. weird. Because we have the July 4th holiday, which was on Tuesday. I mean, I'm just yeah. totally out of sync this week. Like, entirely yeah. out of sync. With that holiday, because then it was like we tried to kind of have normalcy, as they say, and do the Monday show. Great show. We did a great show on Monday. Yeah. <laughs> Good show leading into the uh, July 4th. Fantastic. And then yeah. kind of got into the July 4th. And then it was the way, and just now this week's over. It's Friday. And it just, wow, that was a weird week. Having a holiday like right almost in the middle of the week is just just throws everything right. off because then you're like oh i gotta meet with do this with people or whatever oh but it's july 4th so everyone's out you know blowing right. stuff up and grilling and drinking so. right yeah well the plus side is i did some booking last night well that's good and uh <coughs> yeah right and so that's it, we're... i should have come down but no i didn't <clears throat> And then I didn't message you because I was asleep. Yeah. So. so I'm talking about the behind-the-scenes tech, and we're actually talking to you on the phone right now. So that's a good uh, yeah. I just was talking. I spent an hour talking about audio. Because you know what? You don't have good video if you don't have good audio. Dread, how can you have me pudding if you can't, don't eat your meat? Exactly. Uh, uh, um, so it, let, I'm going to explain here how this works. Which I'm going to have to get. get the board out again. All right. You're doing a podcast. And you uh, want to, you, you have a remote guest like we have right now. Jason's on the phone. All right. Hello. <clears throat> now, you, typically you have Skype. People use Skype. So we could Skype in. Uh, but you'd still have audio there, just like the phone. Uh, we have a phone number, and you can set up Skype with a phone number. You pay them some money. I can't remember how much it is, right? You know. <clears throat> Didn't you guys have a phone number that you paid for for Skype? Mm -hmm. Did you uh, pay for a phone number yeah. for Skype? Yeah, uh, at Skype you you pay like every like three months, and I I believe it was like uh, like something like thirty bucks. Or thirty something bucks. Like that. Okay, so you can you can get your own yeah. dial in phone number so people can call you over Skype. Uh, right. The yeah. way you do this is you need a computer, right? A computing device. You might be able to get away with this on a pad or a phone, but really you kind of need a dedicated uh, computer. And I've got one over here. <clears throat> and your computer has uh, audio out and audio in. It needs to have the the um, the plugs for you know getting audio. You know the headphone plugs or for. Right. Uh, um, you know, for plugging in a mic. Um, now, so, Matt, so I, I, I already got a I, I already got a question there, Professor. Mm -hmm. Okay, what what happens like with Skype if you because you know how most computers are laptops nowadays, right? 
they don't have a they don't have a two input. They just have the one input. Well, that's exactly what I was going to bring up. This ah, MacBook. Excellent. This MacBook I have here, the modern MacBooks. It has one single plug, which is a combination plug for your audio in and out and your uh, yeah your audio in and out. It's got it's got the if you plug the headphones in, you can hear headphones on it. If you plug your uh, headset for like your iPhone, you can actually use the mic and use the headset. It's a multi plug. Mm. <clears throat> what you have to do for that for your Skype or your phone, and I'll talk about the phone in a minute, is you need a, a special cable. You probably have to go up to Amazon or B and H photo or whatever. Uh, they might have them at Best Buy or Fry's would have them. You might be able to go talk to someone there. Maybe, maybe. <laughs> but uh, you need to look for a cable that's a splitter that splits out like your – the typical one is the Mac, right? The MacBook, the Mac portables. <clears throat> and you need a splitter cable that splits out the uh, output, the uh, headphones, to the input, Okay. And that's what you need. Mm -hmm. The other option, which is even better, which we have on the Mac Mini, is you can get a USB interface, audio interface. They're not that expensive. They're relatively pretty <coughs> inexpensive. <coughs> Sorry, Jason. I'm having allergy problems today, too. I'm, like, coughing and doing all I'm trying to do this and being like, uh, uh. <coughs> um, So that plugs into the USB port on your laptop. And I, it, mm -hmm. mine's buried over here, so I can't really show it. Um, well, you know what? Maybe I can show the people what that looks like. It's USB audio interface. Now, a lot, of, a lot of the times, say you're a gamer or whatever, or you're doing a lot of Skype, you're taking a lot of meetings on your laptop, on your MacBook, you might get a headset that's USB, and you plug in the USB, and it gets recognized by the computer, and you use that headset, and so uh, all your audio gets digitized and goes through USB. Works really great. Uh, gamers love it. This is a box. <clears throat> Here's the one we're using, and they're relatively inexpensive. Mm -hmm. Let me show you that here. Very interactive today. Informative and interactive. Okay, sure. I'm going to throw this up here <clears throat> as I'm coughing my way through this. <clears throat> <laughs> that is, this is a, um, oops, was wrong. This is actually what we're using, and you can buy these. This is a Behringer U-Control, <clears throat> and what it is, if you're watching this on video, <clears throat> there's a USB cable that plugs in USB to your, uh, your laptop, your computer, and then you just get those, uh, it's a box, and you get your RS, R, the RCA jacks. That, like your stereo jack. So there's left, right output and left, right uh, input right there. And there's a little uh, LED. This one has a headphones and a volume and an optical output. This is way fancier than the one we have. The one we have is old. But that's what you use. Uh, you can get one of those. Those work great. And they're, uh, the, your computer, your Mac, or your, or your uh, you know PC should just plug it in and recognize it and say, oh, USB audio device. And then you have the cables that you need to plug in to your mixing board to bring in your Skype mm -hmm. audio. Um, there's other fancier ones, too, like for recording music. Uh, it, 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 you could spend <clears throat> tons and tons of money. Uh, I, I recommend just that simple interface. Behringer has them. Some other people probably have them, too. I mean, I'm talking, I think they're under $50, something like that. 20 or 30 or something, mm -hmm. 40. <clears throat> and uh, and you'll get great audio with that. So you either use one of those, which I highly recommend, or you use a, um, or you use like kind of the pigtail and use the actual analog audio ins and outs, the little cables, little eighth inch cables. Uh, one caveat that I just remembered, if you're doing Skype video <clears throat> and you're watching video, uh, there is a little delay with USB audio. So, because it's getting digitalized, so there will be a little delay. So, if you're talking to someone via video Skype and you're listening to their voice, you might see that delay as they're talking uh, on video. 
Maybe we'll yeah, just true. this show might just be all audio. I don't know if we'll. I might run out of time to talk uh, video. Maybe yeah. we'll have to table that for another tech talk, which is fine. Um, so you get uh, you get hooked up with your uh, laptop with the audio in and out, and you plug it into your mixer board where you're bringing in your microphones for your podcast. The audio output of your laptop that you're going to use Skype or phone goes into a channel here, right? <clears throat> I'll just show this again. I got a little board. This is very Jerry Todd today, man. Excellent. Jerry Todd. <laughs> I've only hit my button here a couple times and inadvertently zoomed in. So here's here's our little mixer board again, our little typical mixer board. And so one of these channels here, one of these full <clears throat> on channels, you would bring in the laptop audio. Okay? Just like we're doing Jason. Mm -hmm. So you can hear that. <coughs> and uh and uh we can we can hear him and then you'd uh, bring up that channel. Now, what about uh, him hearing us? That's where you use your aux, these, the red, this aux channel. That's what we can use the aux for. And this is a separate mm -hmm. channel that does a separate mix from the main mix that we're listening to. And we use that to send audio back to the laptop to Jason. That's how he can hear us. So if you're looking here, I'm trying to do this. I'm trying to hold this. I need a Vanna White or something here. Um, <laughs> so we've got this one channel. I don't know if you're watching this. Hopefully <laughs> this, this may suck. You got this one channel right here, which we're taking the output of the laptop and we're mixing that in with my voice so we can hear it. And then we've got this send and the send out, which is this aux, these red red knobs here, and and we plug the out aux out into the input of the um, of the laptop, and then we do something that's called a mix minus, which means on Jason's channel, which is the Skype channel, we do not turn the aux up. We do not turn aux on at all. But on my microphone or anyone else's microphone that we're you know that's talking and when we want to talk to jason we turn the aux up mm -hmm. and then the aux goes out and into the laptop so that's the um so a, a telephone <clears throat> it kind of breaks the metaphor of a telephone a little bit a telephone is a full duplex device you talk and you hear at the same time in and out yeah. we're kind of breaking those two channels up into separate channels on the board <clears throat> to isolate both the input and the output so that we get some good uh, good uh, good sound i'm trying to see if i can show it on this board i'm uh, my I've got. A, I took the camera off here and did a little remote, but it's not. Uh, I could have brought the wireless camera. <clears throat> Let me try to. Mm. I'm gonna try to put this on here to show it on the actual board. <clears throat> so see, one of my channels right here is called phone, and that is the laptop. It the mute is off, and you see that the fader is up, so we can hear Jason. If I turn it down or mute it, we won't hear Jason. And you notice my aux channel, uh, which I have for, um, it's actually the second, there's, there's, there's three auxes here. There's three red buttons, and it's the second one. And I don't know if you can see it, but it's turned all the way down on Jason's channel. We're not sending Jason his own audio uh, back to the laptop. But my mic and all the other mics are. And that's what's getting sent back. And then there's an output there, too. So that's how mm -hmm. you interface and you isolate your Skype on the laptop. <clears throat> now, we're just doing a phone interface. We're not using Skype for the phone interface. Like you said, you could pay your $30. You could do that. We're using Google uh, Google Phone, the Google uh, Google Voice. What do they call that? Google uh, Go yeah, Google Voice. Google Talk. Ah, there you go. So this is a thing where you go out 
then you get your Gmail account. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm just nothing. get this all this thing going on here. Uh, maybe I should have canceled today. Uh, you go out, you get a Gmail account, you know, you get your Google account and you can go to Google talk and get a phone number for free from Google. <clears throat> and you just go up there, you get, you get a number. So this number that we have here, this 503-395-5040 is a Google phone number that we got specifically for Newsbox for this, this, this show. And it's tied to our mm -hmm. Gmail account. Now you can go in and you can get voicemails. We actually have a voicemail that I keep forgetting to play. And <laughs> uh, you can make calls out with the call pad. But the thing with this Google talk is if you open up your Gmail, your Gmail inbox, and you your your uh, your Google is it Google talk? Uh, I don't know. Whatever it's called, just go look it up. You'll find a free phone thing if you're in your inbox in google you can receive calls so if someone calls your number it'll pop up a keypad and you just heard it uh, go off just like skype you hear do 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 and you can answer the call and so someone on a cell phone or a phone can call your google number which is then you're in you're logged into your gmail inbox and then you're you've got your laptop interfaced into your uh, mixer board and that's how you can take calls for your podcast let me see if i can Look at that. i'm gonna see if i can oh it's got your cell phone number on it though <laughs> maybe i won't do that right. here i'll just do it without can i do it without your try to and not do it with your cell phone number? Yeah, it's cell phone. Yeah, so there we go. So that's kind of what it looks like right there, the pad. And we're just in the, we're just in it. So that's, that's how we take a call. And you could do this, again, you could have, you know, if you don't want to mess with getting a phone number or whatever, you can just do it with Skype. That's fine. Same, same difference. You'd log into your Skype, <clears throat> and you would... Uh, talk um so is that uh does that do you have any qu follow-up questions to how to interface the laptop and the phone with the audio for the podcast right yeah well when, when we did it through the uh with the old show uh we just like straight um analogued it in through the wires right i'm interested to hear a little bit more about the uh audio interface box when you're talking about the behringer because uh that seemed to me more of a uh clear-cut kind of uh fail-safe way to get decent audio it is yes Yes. And the reason why, that's a great question, because the reason why is you avoid um, all of the uh, controls of your laptop, like the headphone volume and the mic volume. Sometimes the laptops with the analog interface, the little eighth inch jack, they can't tell what you're plugged into. They just think it's a headphone mm -hmm. or they think it's a microphone, but you're actually plugged into a mixer board and you can get what's called an impedance mismatch. And that's where you get all that scratchy awfulness, you know? Now, right, yeah. modern yeah. laptops should be able to tell the difference. There's a little sensor that knows, oh, we're doing line in and line out. Um, but that doesn't always work necessarily with your equipment. And a USB interface would totally avoid that whole thing because it's all digital it just provides a line level input and output right there and then you can control it all on the board and uh, and yeah the audio quality is great on those so if you can afford it if that's uh, how you want to go i highly recommend the usb interface over trying to plug it into the jacks in your in your uh, laptop very much so right because when we when we were doing it the what we had a problem with is uh, doing Skype, but then if the if the laptop was also used for like a source for output for music, right? Uh, it couldn't do the both at the same time. You had to actually unplug uh, the uh, the Skype cord and then plug in the 
out uh, source for the audio. Right. That's right. Yeah. Yeah, you can you can sometimes do that depending on the laptop. I think if you have a MacBook or a Mac, um, you can do that. You can kind of combine do the music and the the Skype or whatever. But it really depends yeah. on the equipment. Uh, if you really, so- I, I I recommend. That if you're doing a professional, if you want to really be professional with your podcast and you're taking calls in with Skype and all that, have a dedicated laptop that's the Skype uh, laptop. Right. You yeah. know, just have one, someone's, you know, this is the Skype one for the show. And then if you have playing back music or whatever, uh, have just someone else's laptop plugged into the board or, or, um, or their iPod or whatever. Um, the more you separate it out, it, it is more complicated. You have to use your mixing board, but the less problems you're going to have. And if you're running everything on a computer, computers crash. <laughs> they Something goes right, wrong in yeah. the computer. Uh, you're trying to play your iTunes and do Skype and all that, and the computer just goes, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm done, I'm out. You know. And then you're, if you're doing a live show or you're trying to do a podcast, the whole thing we're trying to do here... And the whole thing, the way our setup works, is we're trying to make it reliable, right? I mean, I, I would say the hosts are the less reliable uh, piece of this show. Uh, as, um, as, as I can attest, right, yeah. yeah. All, both of us, right? Uh, um, I've got a frog in my throat. Um, but the studio itself is, <laughs> is quite quite reliable. Uh, you know, as soon as we can get, like, the Terminator uh, artificial intelligence in here, we're done. It's like, you know. But uh, you want your equipment and you want your show to be reliable. You don't want to, especially if you're doing a live stream, because we started this talking about live streaming. We're live streaming yeah. right now. We're talking to Jason. We the computers we're live streaming on are is not the computer we're talking to Jason over the phone. A- again, why? Because we don't want to crash the computer that's sending the stream to Facebook or to Periscope while we're talking on the phone to Jason. So the more you kind of separate those parts out, sure, the laptop might crash and we lose the caller, but you don't crash your whole entire show. And that's usually a problem that I see with folks. There's a lot of software out there that's all integrated, and that's cool. That's always the future. Uh, But you have to kind of weigh uh, how much reliability you want along with – you know what you're what you're willing to to afford yeah. and stand i don't know i mean did you guys you know have you you did that show for five years did you guys do a lot of uh did you know things crash and take the show down and all that you know um yeah, there was there was a few times uh, but it had more to do with uh just the uh the internet itself right but, uh, we'd lose it that way. Very rarely did we ever have. Uh, luckily, we you know we didn't really have any uh, tech in mid, mid in mid show like a laptop going down and right or, or whatever. Whatever. But I, I I have another question about the audio and stuff. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> simply because I I just don't know the answer. Uh, on on uh, in studio shows. Uh, able to answer the phone off the air and kind of do a uh, phone screening. How yeah. how would somebody be able to call in on Skype, have somebody in the studio without it being heard on the general feed, answer the phone and queue it up? Okay. Uh, the way to do that, let me let me see if I can... I'm pretty sure we've got that set up here. Again, that all goes back to setting up your uh, the output of the Skype, the output of the um, caller laptop to the mains, and then the input to the sub-channel, the sub-out, okay? So what I should be able to mm-hmm. do <clears throat> is... Let's try this right now. Let's try this live. So I'm going to... Basically, I'm taking down the main fader of Jason right now. Hey, Jason, are you there? Are you there? Go ahead. Answer. Oh, see, I can't hear him. (laughs) Are you there? 
Hello? Yep. Oh, okay. Hello. Okay, uh, uh, you know what? Let me let me check this again. Uh, so go ahead and answer. Do a one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three for me. Gotcha. Testing one. Okay, so I'm taking Jason out of the mains, and you can't hear Jason, okay? Um, <clears throat> unfortunately, in my demo, I just realized that I've got it, we've got it wired differently here. Uh, so you couldn't hear Jason on the mains, but if we, if my monitor, the monitor that I'm doing, which is weird because it should be set up that way, <laughs> just discovered a, a weird thing. Um, I should still be able to hear Jason in my headphones and talk to him, but you wouldn't hear him on the air, like when I just turned him down. And these are using the aux Ooh. subchannels of the board. So the headphone output that everyone is using to monitor the program goes out a mm -hmm. aux subchannel. And that's where I could still hear you because you're still talking on the aux subchannel, and um, and of course you can still hear me talk because th what I'm sending you is not uh, coming off the main channel. I'm sending you a submix of the microphones, not the full mix. Uh, this is also okay. this is also another thing to do if you're doing a podcast, if you're doing a show, if you're playing music and you have a caller on the line. You can yeah. give them the music or not give them the music. It just depends. Sometimes it messes with their Skype uh, channel um, so they could hear your online or they could hear your music or not. Usually this has the effect if you're using the aux outs. Um, and this is, yeah. this is harder to describe and it's easier to diagram, which we don't have a diagram, but we could, you know, diagram that up. Um, what you would, what you would hear is the caller would call in and the mics are not muted on the auxiliary output. So they could still hear the people mm -hmm. talking and they could have a conversation with that person and say, hey, uh, yeah, we're, we're just listening to some music. Music is going out the main channel. The mics are muted on the main channel along with the Skype. So you're just hearing the yeah. laptop playing the music. But on those aux inputs and outputs, you have a whole submix where people can talk to each other, where the f caller will hear uh, what's live on the air, whatever's mixed into the aux channel. It could be the music or not. Uh, I've, I've had better luck with not. Don't mix in. Just mix the mics in. Don't mix anything else in. The caller doesn't right. need to hear the music playing over so, the crappy uh, Skype channel. So, so if somebody called in, and let's say the the show hosts are doing the show, mm -hmm. a call screener could actually talk behind the scenes yes. to the caller and not have it bleed over into the main. Correct. Uh, excellent. Okay. Correct. And the problem I have that we just demonstrated right here is I don't have I don't have my submixes set up that way, um, and it's probably because I have a Skype. And this other one set up. Um, so, so my monitors that I'm that we're monitoring with headphones are is actually just a. Um, it's it's like a a, 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 a it, um, what do I want to say? It, it's a, a it's a copy of the main out mix. Basically, that's what's going on. Gotcha. There. So, like if I turn you down. Let's try this again because I'm curious. So uh, do your countdown. Count, count, count. Okay. Uh, check one, two. Yeah, see, I, I can't hear you in the headphones when I turn your fader down. Uh, if I had that, just like just like folks out there on um, on the stream can hear that too where I turned your you down. But uh, I could rewire this and use the aux outs going into... Um, going into this headphone amp here and just be getting uh, a submix that would uh, be able to do that. So it's possible with the mixer board. And if you're doing a lot of that, you know, remember we've got this little tiny 
two channel mixer board here uh, that has one FX aux channel on it. If you're doing a bunch of this for a podcast, you might have to get a little bit bigger board and you want uh, multiple aux channels. The board we're using here in the studio has three. One is being used for FX and then there's two separate aux channels there. Um, uh, again, these are auxiliary mixy mixes. Um, so, so we have what we need here. So you probably need uh, two or three, uh, a board that has two or three um, separate um, auxiliary uh, channels to be able to mix mm -hmm. your, and do your call screening and all of that. <clears throat> and you might need, the other thing you might need, uh, which we have here as well, is you might need a separate uh, headphone amplifier that plugs into the output of the aux mix to do your call screening so that's just another thing to think about um we have a big one here but uh they come in little boxes they're i think under 50 dollars too that have a couple channels people can plug multiple headphones in like five channels or whatever and that just gets plugged into the output aux out of the mixing board into the headphones of the call screener so you might need that yeah, as well I, I think that, you know, um, you might not be able to use the phone, the headphone output on the board specifically. So, and if you're mm -hmm. doing a podcast and you're doing a lot of people and people are on headphones, you kind of need a headphone amp anyway. Kind of, and that's like a little right. separate, it's like a little box that's a separate headphone mixer. So you bring in one headphone channel and then there's sliders for everyone's headphone and then they can adjust individually their own uh, their own headphones back when i was a kid and doing garage recordings and rock and roll we didn't have any of this stuff they did just you couldn't get it now i mean you can go to guitar center or whatever and pick up this little tiny box like i said it's probably under 50 bucks and mix your headphones put a whole bunch of people on headphones it's pretty nice yeah but like I said, uh, a lot of that's easier to talk about with a diagram, but that's basically how you would do that on the podcast. Flow charts. We need flow charts. Yeah, maybe. I mean, if, if I actually plan this whole thing <laughs> out, you know, but then it would be almost like a, a seminar, a, a training. I don't know. Will we charge for that? Well, in, instead of TED Talks, it's Doc Talk. That's right. <clears throat> oh, man, my voice. <laughs> So that's audio, I think. So I, I don't know, should I, oh, wow, I thought I was going to do like uh, like a quick like 15 minutes or a half an hour and just talk about some of the behind the scenes tech and go and and like carry them an hour. I'm pretty long. Yeah. But hopefully, yeah. I mean, this is informational, I hope. Sure, um, yeah. Yeah, I mean, you know, I watch live streams online and... Um, you know, some are really good and some are just not so good. <laughs> yeah. And they're usually very basic problems, like audio problems. Right, yeah. We talked yeah. about miking, we talked about mics, we talked about audio. Um, well, it's also, it, it's also really useful because, I mean, a lot of people are doing kind of a grassroots sort of uh, podcasting now. Right. Exactly. And, uh, uh, and when you know, when we got into it, too... Uh, on the other show, I mean, five years ago, we were complete novices. And, I mean, a lot of people just don't recognize, especially if you want to make it a halfway decent professional type podcast or streaming audio show, uh, that a lot of moving parts go into creating uh, a good uh, reg regulated, even sound. And, right. you know, now if you throw in video, the streaming video quality, too. Yeah, uh, that's a good point on the audio side, and and uh, I think I don't know if we'll get to video today, and maybe that's a great teaser. Maybe we'll do video some other time. Uh, it'll just turn out to be all audio today, which is fine. The audio is uh, difficult, but um, the uh, the thing about having an even first having a professional board, having things mic'd up, monitoring. I talked about monitoring on headphones, making sure you're listening to what you're putting out there. Mm -hmm. you're surprised at people who don't do that on their live stream and you're like how do you know what it sounds like <laughs> and usually <laughs> right, they yeah. don't usually it's people like 
watching or listening going, uh, no sound, no sound, no sound. Hello. Anybody there? Uh, but uh, we have, uh, I pointed out here briefly, kind of showing our setup a little bit. Uh, we have uh, tube preamps that make uh, this sound good. The other thing that's in that tube preamp setting is a compressor limiter. Uh, mm -hmm. I would highly recommend a compressor limiter for your podcast if you're really serious about doing your podcasting. And we're talking about, you know, we're not talking about like one person like like i talked about the whole facebook live and periscope you know bring up your iphone and turn it on turn the app on and do your thing right well that's we're not talking about that level of podcasting we're uh, and streaming we're talking about a more professional like what you're seeing and hearing here um yeah. which involves uh, you know decent mics headphones a mixer board and all of that um if you you know, and if you're going down that path, you're probably spending a little money. You you got to buy a board and you got to buy mics and all that. Or or you, a good way is find someone who's a musician who has the stuff already. That was my thing. That's how I got into podcasting. I was a musician from my the old days. Sure. So I had mics laying around and board and whatnot. I'm like, well, I guess I could record a podcast because I've got what I needed. That's always helpful if you find someone. Um, right. Yeah. But get a compressor limiter. Um, and put that in the audio chain as the last part of the audio chain before you go into your your streaming um, computer or your 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 recorder, whatever you're using to record the podcast. That will work wonders to keep the levels uh, proper. Now you have to kind of learn how to use it, and that's a whole big discussion. Um, there are, right. there's an old DBX, DBX makes some, they're a little bit more expensive. They make some compressor limiters. Uh, if you can find the ones that don't have that many buttons, <laughs> I, I'm not joking right. or knobs that go with that one. Uh, compressor limiter noise gate can get really, really complicated. And the one we did, we don't have any in the studio, but the ones uh, I used in Behringer has some very inexpensive ones, and they're like two channels, four channels, but they've got tons of settings for compressor limiter. Now you would use those in a music setting, but you really need to kind of delve deep into audio engineering to. Um, to learn that yeah so uh i know i had a dbx that had like a slider and a knob on it and you could just see there and adjust the level and the level of compression what a compressor limiter does is when you talk really quiet it raises the volume and when you shout mm -hmm. really loud it clamps down it limits the uh the output and that's the key right. so if you have like a guest on the mic and they're kind of low and it's kind of gets quiet and then people start shouting or whatever it clamps down and it keeps kind of a even level to your audio that's super critical for podcasting for right. live streaming because at some point that audio is getting uh, turned into digital and then being sent out on the airwaves or digital and being recorded and digital when it gets distorted just sounds like crap it, it's all ones and zeros so it's just ones and zeros of crap Whereas, right and that's really what it is when you're podcasting too it's always the two extremes somebody's either too quiet right. or somebody's coming in really hot right and uh if you don't have that uh that modulator in there to uh, kind of even things out. I mean, it can sound like you would sound like in the old, with like a little tape recorder, you know? Exactly. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, again, uh, part, part of that, I recommend someone that's on the mixer board and adjusting levels and monitoring levels. I think you, 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 you get, you know, you get a lot of good goodness out of having someone there on the mixer on the headphones. Yeah. Oh, someone's mic that's, you know, you get one guest who's on the mic and they talk like this. They're real quiet and stuff. And then you get the host <laughs> who's, ah, ah, welcome to, you know, Z100. Right. You know, and uh, it's good to have someone who's adjusting those levels. But the compressor limiter is the last part 
of the audio food chain that will clean up any other problems you might have. Now, uh, like I said, with a compressor limiter, you can get into troubles if you don't know how to use it because you can... Um, you can misuse it, so you kind of need to to know know a little bit of how to use it. The simpler, the better. Just go for the simpler one. Find find something out there that just has not so many controls. It's just how you know how how do I want to bring how much do I want to bring up the volume? How much do I want to limit it? Done. That's that's what I need to do. Um, uh, because uh, the stuff that they use for audio and all that uh, can get really complicated. Now, on these two preamps, we have it set to a limit. So it actually has a circuit in there that's monitoring, and it is bringing, it is bringing the audio up. And then if someone gets really loud, it will clamp them down, and that's all automatic. For, um, oh, one thing that's super awesome is Yamaha mixer boards. I notice these days have mm -hmm. a compressor limiter circuit on the channels built in. So wow. that's a yeah. super cool thing. Now they're a little, the Yamaha's a little more expensive equipment. I think the other vendors out there, you probably can find it now. Like once one company does it, the other companies go, well, we clearly need that too. I think that's fantastic. Quite frankly, I think that's been a long time coming that that uh, compressor limiter type circuits should be built into the board. Then you don't have to go out and worry about getting something else, and that's perfect for podcasting. Now, a little guy like this is not going to have it, unfortunately. But, um, again, in lieu of having someone on the board and making physical adjustments as you're doing your show – the compressor limiter can really, really super help. And you never know what's going to happen if you're doing something live, you know. Um, so if right. you get one of those boards, if you're looking for a board, see if you can look for one that has has that built in. That'll really help, help you a lot. Um, the other thing that uh, we have used uh, back at House of Sound, where we used to do a bunch of stuff at House of Sound, is uh, the digital... We were talking about the USB digital interface for the um, for the Skype. Uh, you could also use that for your streaming. So you could have a USB digital interface, do the output of your, uh, of your audio, and then that goes into your streaming laptop or recording. If you're, you could use something like Audacity or which is free, something like that to record your podcast onto your hard drive, or to live stream it. Um, they make, uh, and we had this over there. They make more expensive digital USB digital interfaces that have compressor limiters built in there too. <clears throat> so that's a great way to do it, right? To um, uh, I think we had a lexicon, if I remember correctly. Mm -hmm. It was probably a few, right. I think it was a few hundred dollars. I want to say maybe not, maybe a hundred dollars. Uh, I think they still. Yeah, sell it. It, it varies. I can look it up, but you can spend a lot on that USB interface, right? Because they can have a tube in it or whatever. But some of them, the Behringer I talked about does not have this, but some of them have a. Uh, the uh, com little compressor limiter hardware in it and you can make those adjustments right on the usb device so that's really handy too so that would be in lieu of going out and getting a compressor limiter so if you in a perfect world if you went out and got like a, a mixing board that had a compressor limiters on the on the channels and then you got your interface which is your streaming your recording and then that had one too you'd you'd be all set um Sometimes software does it if you're using specialized software to record and stream your podcast. Uh, NiceCast has it, actually. Mm -hmm. um, so NiceCast, and this kind of gets into how do you stream things or how do you record things. Uh, for recording, right. the easiest way, again, you're using dedicated laptops, dedicated computers, not your Skype computer. This is the computer that you're using, not for surfing, but for recording or streaming your podcast. Uh, you want reliability. Uh, you're bringing in the master audio of your show uh, through the inputs, USB recommended. 
And then uh, if you're just recording the podcast, you could use uh, recording software. Uh, the uh, easiest one is called Audacity. Audacity is a free open source uh, audio editor recorder. Uh, you can just type in Audacity, A-U-D-I. How do you spell Audacity? <laughs> Let me see here. A U D I C I T Y. There it is. Audacity. A A U D A C I T Y. Audacity. There you Audacity. Go. And I, you know, everyone has this. I mean, it's free. You can get it. Here it is right here. I'm going to pull it up and show the folks what Audacity looks like. I don't know what version I have here. There's no waveform in it, but. Um, here it is right here. There's your audacity. Um, you know, and you have all these controls. And, and here's a, you see right here, you can, I think you can make a new file. And you, you've got a recorder and all that. It's very simple, uh, but very powerful. And it's free. <clears throat> if you want to use, if you want it, audacity to make MP3s. Now, I... I when you record your podcast, I would recommend recording it in a non-compressed format, like maybe a WAV file, which is popular. You can do that on Windows or on the Mac, or um, uh, the other uncompressed uh, on the Mac. It's not AAC, AC whatever yeah. it is. Um, it, oh, oh, is it OSF? No, that's. I think that's AUG. But wave, you can gotcha. most all this stuff will do wave. Oh, okay. And wave, wave. Yeah. Uh, like I said, Max got their own, but Max also read wave. It's a non non compressed digital audio format. Doesn't have any compression. It's not MP3. So the file is going to be a lot bigger. So you got to make sure you got plenty of space. But on a modern computer, you'll have plenty of space to record lots of audio, and. Um, and uh, it, it'll handle it. Uh, th those files are basically like CD quality or better. Uh, it, literally, the file format is the same as you would have got on the old CDs. Uh, it's called PCM. It's a way of encoding audio without mm -hmm. compressing and without making the audio, f the, the big wave file smaller. Uh, you can record record in that uncompressed format. Um, <clears throat> a, uh, it, you could use Audacity to do that. Uh, the, the reason the reason I, I say record in an uncompressed format is because then the computer doesn't have to work extra hard in coding and compressing the audio. Now, modern computers have enough power to do that, but again, you're looking for reliability, uh, if something goes wrong. Um, also, if you need to edit your podcast, it's a, it, you're using a, what I, back in the day when we didn't use computers to record things, we used tape. That's the master tape, um, not a dupe. Um, so it's it's much better to record. Again, you you could record in a compressed format. Um, you just need more horsepower. This, when you're streaming, um, you actually are encoding to an MP3 format. So, <clears throat> for example, say you're using a powerful MacBook or whatever to record and stream your podcast, which you can do if you have enough horsepower. Uh, so you're making a master recording and you're also streaming, which is encoding the audio and sending it out in MP3 format. So it's already doing some work there. Um, that's why I recommend always doing, doing the master. And then you can, then you can just re-encode your, your show into an MP3. You have more options. You can make a, a better encode of the MP3. If, if you don't like, if you don't like the quality your audio quality of your MP3 encoding, you can adjust, you know, the what kind of how many kilobits per second you want. Is it, should we do 192 or 128 or 64 or 92, mm -hmm. you know, that sort of thing. You can do that all post with your recording. Um, and hard drive space these days is, is cheap. There's plenty of hard drive space for 
those larger audio recordings. And we're doing video now, so <laughs> um, audio is easy. Um, mm -hmm. I'm trying to think what else you would do. Oh, for Audacity, if you do want to encode MP3s in Audacity, you have to go find a plugin called Lame, L A M E. You have to go Google mm -hmm. Lame. And that has to do with the fact that Audacity is open source and MP3 surprisingly even though it's ubiquitous and everyone uses mp3 it actually is a licensed <clears throat> intellectual property um it's owned by the fraunhofer institute in germany <laughs> uh but they they do mm -hmm. they do give you a license for for using it so it's open license uh, we we do not have time to go into uh, codec licensing for audio and video. Oh my gosh, it will make your head spin. It has a lot to do <laughs> right. with intellectual property and lawyers and who gets to use what and how do you license this for your products and all that. Um, but MP3, you're, you're, you can use as a consumer, but uh, you have to, the Audacity people can't distribute the MP3 encoder, so you have to go download that plug in separately find it and it's called lame l-a-m-e it's all right it's not my f to be honest i i think commercial products do a better job which uh reminded me also as well um if you have a mac uh you can get the garage apple's garage band which is kind of just a basic thing mm -hmm. you could use that to record and mix your podcast that works fine garage band um right and it, well if you're on pc there's also like adobe yeah, you know, Audition is not bad. Right. Or you can go for the more advanced uh, Pro Tools. But those, and again, but like Adobe, right, that's a commercial product. You have to go buy that. <clears throat> right? Right, right. Yeah. Uh -huh. GarageBand, I don't, I guess GarageBand you had to pay for, but it wasn't very expensive. Well, and actually, if you got a new Mac, it often would just come beyond there. I think. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think uh, at least as recent as. Three, I think three years ago, uh, uh, GarageBand started becoming uh, a part of a package that you could get, you know, right. when you got it, when you got an Apple, uh, like a MacBook. Yeah, I think mine, mine's old. I don't think mine came with it. I had to go buy it. It was like iLife or something like that. I don't even know if they make, uh, if they're updating GarageBand anymore. But it's got all the things you can do multiple tracks. You could mix a podcast. It's got it's got tools in there to uh, to do podcasting type things. Um, it has uh, if you're if you record a podcast, for example, if you're recording your podcast, you record it as a wave file, an uncompressed file, and then you. Um, and then you put like the music on and, and maybe someone does an intro. Hey, welcome to the coffee with Kermit, you know, that sort of thing. Um, you, can, right. you can use GarageBand for multiple tracks. And there's something called a ducking feature in your software that you got to look for. Mm -hmm. uh, again, if you have questions, always Google it. Watch uh, YouTube tutorials are awesome. I often watch YouTube tutorials all the time. Like, how do you do this? And someone's made like a five minute YouTube and they're like on the software, they're, they're, they're showing you, they're showing you how to do it. Um, uh, but you, you ducking, what ducking does is say you have some music or a voiceover. So you got music and a voiceover. Ducking is the automatic uh, feature that will drop the music down underneath the narrator's voice. So it's that thing where you hear the intro music, da 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 da, da and then the, the narrator comes in. What happens is the master audio level is the same, but in order to make it the same, um, audio is additive, right? If, if I mm -hmm. play some music and then I add another sound, if we add two sounds, we're adding those sounds together, and that raises the the level of the master audio okay well if you want to make an even professional podcast when your narrator comes in in order to talk over the music he has to be way louder than the music which makes everything louder in the end what you do is you do ducking uh ducking ducks whatever the background is underneath the narrator so the narrator can come in at a um 
at a even level. This is a thing that that came out of the radio technology, radio days, and software <laughs> like GarageBand has like that feature, like a ducking feature where you would automatically, you've got the music track and then the narrator track. Um, I could actually show it. I was working on a tune in GarageBand the other day. Um, and then you just say duck. And when the narrator's voice, when that track comes in, it lowers the volume of the audio underneath it, but keeps all the audio consistent. So, and all of those features, I'm sure you could find that in Audition, I would guess, yep. and Pro uh -huh. Tools, and these other sorts of uh, uh, advanced uh, software that you would buy. Um, I don't have a recommendation. Like I said, I, I, I now just if I need to do something quick, I'll, I'll fire up. Um, GarageBand. I've used Audacity. Uh, I do. Uh, there's a product that I've used for years on the PC that I really, really like. Uh, I've used it for oh, over 10 years. Uh, probably, oh, geez, even more than that. Uh, it's called SoundForge. Uh, Sony owns mm -hmm. it now. Sony SoundForge. I like that SoundForge a lot. Um, I think you can still buy it standalone. Sony has their own video editor, which is actually pretty good. They're 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 they bought up these Sony for some reason bought up these software companies, SoundForge, and they have a editor. This is all PC. This is not Mac. So if you're on a PC and you're looking to buy some software, I I recommend the Sony package. The, their video editor is called Vegas, and it's uh, very good. It's kind of like uh, it's kind of like the Final Cut of on the PC. Final Cut, of course, is Mac only, so if you're using Final Cut, you can only use a Mac. But um, but I like the Sony stuff, and and it's it's priced really well. Like we're talking hundred dollars or under for for a, for like a Sony Vegas video editor, SoundForge audio, all of that. So um, that's good. Or you've got Adobe, you can use Adobe. And then you, there you have to get a subscription. These days, I think, right? You have to pay, right? Uh -huh. Pay monthly or whatever, um, right? You know, I, I I don't know always if I like that, but you know, it works for some people, and certainly uh, Adobe stuff has been around forever, uh, and it's uh, they've got great products. Um, I started learning editing on Adobe Premiere. For video editing back in the mm -hmm. 90s so i still know my way around premiere i'm running an older copy these days but because mostly i use final cut um on the mac for editing uh but uh yeah premiere premiere is really good and uh audition is their audio right right mm -hmm. yeah um haven't haven't really used audition like i said i've used soundforge on the Sony stuff. And they've got all the bells and whistles on that. You can find open source freeware. If, if, that's the thing. If you if you want to try some like Audacity, there's way more um uh there's a lot of software out there that's open source and free. Uh just a Google DAW or Digital Audio Workstation software and you'll find free packages out there open source that you can run. You can run them on your Mac. Or you can run them on your PC, or you can run them on a Linux box, even. Um, although, mm -hmm. no offense to my Linux friends, Linux has its place in the world. I like Linux a lot, especially if you're doing web development and servers. But I don't. I I don't know. I I survey the Linux world every couple of years to see what they've got for video editing and audio editing and stuff, and it's always kind of falls short from the PC or the um, Mac and commercial projects, mainly because of that licensing mm -hmm. issues, licensing with uh, products, licensing the, uh, yeah. the compressors and the codecs and the intellectual property. That's mainly the problem why Linux has always fallen short in the uh, digital audio and video media production world, why people use Macs and, and PCs and buy commercial software because uh, they get the licenses for all that stuff. So, you know, we'd really... Uh, see, I ran out of time, and I uh, I talked a little bit about the Mevo video streaming 
camera. Um, you know, I do. I don't know uh, audio wise on that thing. It has mic on it. I, I don't know. I think it has an input uh, for audio for the board. By the way, because we've mm-hmm. just been talking about audio, we can we can pick that up later. Because I think we'll do this again when it makes sense to do this. I was going to formalize it. And we can pick up from here. Mm -hmm. We've talked about audio. We can talk about video and video setup and good video and how video streams and all of that. Right? Right, yeah. So, yeah. So that's about about the show. (laughs) Oh, man. (laughs) Yeah, I don't know. I, it's it's weird. I didn't expect to do this, but then I was like, oh, yeah, let's let's have a little chat. I appreciate that you joined. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I it's always scary to do this alone. My throat has cleared <laughs> up now after an hour. I was like, uh, 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 this uh, right, yeah, stupid little uh, what do we want to talk about? Um, allergy. I think it's allergies again, right? I think that's what's going on. It is, there. yeah. It's like, and and today, and oh, what's today? Overcast and dark. Uh, yesterday it was ninety yep. some odd degrees. Oh my word. Ooh. Yep. Anyway, well, uh, happy Friday to you all. Uh, you got any uh, closing thoughts there, uh, Jason? <laughs> um, cl- closing thoughts uh, would include. Uh, a, uh, a a brand new alarm that will be purchased this weekend, so that way I don't have to. Uh, you know what I do? Have a. Uh, you know what I do? Hmm. Here's a pro tip. I'll tell you what I do. Uh, like some, sometimes I'll have to do like some live, you know, do a thing and be somewhere, and like the setup. Like you say the live say the live show starts at eight, right? You got to be on site by like mm-hmm. five fifty in the morning or something insane like that, right? Right. And you make sure yeah. all these, everything's set up. I usually have like my old iPhone and my iPad and my phone, and they all have alarms turned on, right? Because you've ever had that yeah. thing where you sleep through one alarm or uh, or the batteries die on your phone and then it's like the alarm doesn't go off. So I, I always like have like 10 alarms that all go off <laughs> at the same time. So That's, Yeah, I, th- I think we'll be doing that because I have a couple backup old phones <laughs> that I can sh- just use as a dedicated alarm. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it'd be interesting yeah. to see if, if anyone watches this show. I'll 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 definitely tag it as uh, tech talk. You know, all about audio. What, what should right. I call this? Uh, all about audio, audio podcast. Yeah, audio. why not? Yeah, yeah, something like that. Yeah. So, and um, uh, what is our dog on it? What is our email here? It's n u z b. Is it n u z? Hang on, let me look here. Yeah, okay. Our email is NUZ. It's right here if you're watching the video. And I, it's hard because the monitor, I can't see it, the lower third, but it's NUZBXX at gmail.com. Um, mm-hmm. And we're also, uh, we're also on Twitter as uh, NZZBXX, I think. <laughs> Yes. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. So uh, if you have questions, <clears throat> and you can call the phone number, we actually do have uh, voicemail. You do get voicemail on this thing. So if you do have questions about audio or video, uh, call in, and we can maybe uh, uh, address it on the next show or whatever. You know, address it on the show, or or offline, sure. whatever. Feel free to get a hold of us. Feel free to get a hold of me, Doc Normal. Your podcast streaming guy right so anyway i haven't even looked at the news i've been so tired so but i'm not gonna i'll I'll go i'll go read the news now for all i know uh you know there's a mushroom cloud over north korea or something at this point (laughs) right yeah so really it's not overcast it's just a giant mushroom cloud that you see in the sky and great you know all right well uh, I'll see you later, everybody. Uh, have a great weekend, and we'll be back, uh, fingers crossed, on Monday. <laughs> Monday, Monday. That's right. All right. Talk to you later. Bye. <laughs>